I'm Josh, and I am from Gloversville, New York. Mm, I'm Rob from Illion, New York. <laughs> um, our, after our world got turned upside down, we got introduced to the Ronald McDonald House in Albany, New York. And it, as we were coming in, I was that guy that had his head down like, okay, let's just get this done and over with. We hit it off. Like yeah. We became wicked close really quick. And Ever since then. His daughter is my niece. Yeah, I love daughter her to death. My, that's my niece and nephew. Yeah. Carter three. I love the Carter Come on. <laughs> We've just been best friends since then. Yeah. I mean, we stay in touch throughout everything. Mm -hmm. You know what? I, 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 can, I can recall so many times of, like, I'll go out to get Jasper's snack, but I always <laughs> had to stop by Anna's room to see what the snack she, she wanted. wanted. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, you know, when the kids are going through stuff like that, you want to give them, you want to get them whatever. You know, whatever makes them happy. My favorite's the McDonald's post. So <laughs> we went to McDonald's one time and we thought we were able to go into it and we couldn't. So we took a picture of us walking through the drive through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cars lined up behind us. All yeah, laughing. it was great. It was the best thing ever. <laughs> so as we were actually in New York City, that's the first thing we did. Took a picture in Times Square just like we did at that McDonald's parking lot. <laughs> wow, we're on our way to McDonald's. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> when your world gets torn upside down and it, as the father, you're the protector, the provider, you're supposed to be there to stop the hurt, to stop the pain, and then all of a sudden it hits you and there's nothing you can do. I think that's what hurts the most, actually. Yeah. The fact that you're a dad and not being able to do nothing for your child, I think that's probably what hurts the most. And that's exactly it. It hurts. It hurts. You it know, hurts. and not being able to take that pain away right then and there, not being able to make things just feel better right then and know. there. And just watch your kid get sicker and sicker just and suffer. And yeah, you do everything in your power, and mm -hmm. it, it is good to have follow fathers like so when i we first got diagnosed you know it, it was a whirlwind information and everybody's like oh i want to help you oh we're there for you and and they truly are but there's nothing they can do because they don't understand, they don't understand yeah. what we're going through mm -hmm. like i leaned on josh a lot i mm -hmm. asked him a bunch of questions you can see it as soon as when i first met him as soon as he walked through the door you can just see it on his face yeah it was it was it was like as plain as day in his face that you know he just got told though because I I seen it in myself you know mm -hmm. I seen it in myself and we seen I it to a couple out, other dads yeah at the house and I almost felt like compelled I almost felt compelled because I'm already a friendly guy in all honesty I'm already a friendly guy <laughs> but something drew me to come you know, I mean just to you know go introduce myself go mm -hmm. talk to him and you know and I, you know what. I want to take a minute of it back. Nope. Because we became so close. We're like family. He dragged me outside and for my first cigarette at the Ronald McDonald house. And he's like, ask me away. Ask away. Just so ask. I did. I asked him a whole bunch of questions. And we actually bounced a lot of things off of each other. Mm -hmm. And it's fathers out there who have kids that don't have cancer, they don't understand. They won't. They try to, but nobody, nobody would ever expect all that, you know. It's, There's no preparing you for it. No. There's no preparing you for no. it whatsoever. It's and like, even if you're prepared for it, you're not you're prepared not. for it. It's literally like, you know, you take a deck of cards and you just, you know, you play the hand you've been dealt. You mm -hmm. know, that's the hand we got dealt. And now we're just trying to play it the best, you know, we're just trying to play that game the best we can. And be there as much as, as much we as can. As much as possible, yeah. I found out fam because of my wife. Um, she she was just on the organization, and my first honest to god experience because I don't do all that Facebook stuff. I, I'll watch videos here yeah, and there, but here. I don't do any of the posts and stuff. Same and here. all of a sudden, mm -hmm. I, I I won't lie. The first message I ever caught from fam was actually when Milk um, heard about my daughter doing all of her donations with the chemo bags, the you know the holiday specials. She raised and um, helped get a whole crap ton of the cancer survivor dolls for the kids for Christmas and just all the good stuff. And Milk caught wind of it 
and tried to do something great for my daughter and my daughter turned around and took that money and provided more gifts and more craft activities for our Melody Center, which is an amazing foundation, or not foundation, I'm sorry, area in Albany Med. It's our outpatient cancer clinic and she wanted to make sure that the kids had stuff to do. So Mill caught that and she just continued to donate and she wanted to continue to do good. And the, I'll she tell you. has a big sweetheart. Mm -hmm. That child has a big heart. Oh, and we won for Christmas. The Christmas um, thousand dollar giveaway, which <laughs> that was pretty cool. She turned around and Anna took that money and bought more kids Christmas presents actually inside uh, D7, which is our children's cancer ward. She took that money and she got to play Santa, so she was she was pretty cool about that. <laughs> I did talk to Corey a couple times. I never got the privilege of actually meeting her in person. Every time I saw anything Sunflower, I always thought of her and shared it with her. And we did talk quite a bit. And that, that's actually one of the times that I was actually involved in that. Because, you know, I was asking her questions. And when she started having her hard time, I was letting her know that we were there. And we were constantly thinking of her and sending our love to her. I mean, for us, one one of the cool things was, um, you. My daughter has what's called Ewing sarcoma. It's a very rare bone cancer, and where we live, there's not really much talk about it. And fam, because uh, of Corey too. Corey had Ewing sarcoma. Um, there was a lot of parents that reached out to us, and we, you know. My wife, um, she had uh, a female, uh, she's part of fam, um, that she would constantly bounce ideas off or, hey, you know, the doctors were talking about this, what is your output, you know, you've been through this, and they helped, and it's because of fam, we had that opportunity, we had that extra voice in our ear, the extra mm -hmm. opinion, and a family member who's gone through and seen that help guide us through it i think that's the thing about fam that like when you have that that community of people who are dealing with stuff similar that's similar to what you're going through mm -hmm. you you have other outlets of like information that you can get from other people you know what i'm saying because like google's I mean, dangerous it is it, i i i tell <laughs> i i tell my wife all the time you know just don't don't look stuff up on google you know don't rely on on like all that other nonsense because you're gonna do nothing but scare yourself even more mm -hmm. don't do it of course she does it anyway she don't listen to me but um i did i did the same thing <laughs> but we had the family members but to exactly, back us up family members though because they've they've experienced stuff you know mm -hmm. they've gone through what you're currently going through or what you've gone through so having that extra voice in your ear you know giving you this advice or telling you you know you have you you, you might have this option or that option you know is just is just incredible you know yeah. having that to lean back on and now that we're on the opposite side of the foot we try to pass on our knowledge mm -hmm. you know we have family members that reach out to us mm -hmm. that we follow in the story and we mm -hmm. talk to them and my daughter one of <laughs> One of our last treatments, you know, going into the outpatient, our daughter saw a female, a little girl that was losing her hair and was upset. My daughter was the same way until one day we were in Walmart. She said, I don't want to wear a hat. Told her to take it off. Be proud. It's your story. You're the warrior. Everybody mm -hmm. knows it. And my daughter shares that story with other kids. And it's because of these family members who helped get us to that point. We want to make sure we pass on our knowledge for it. Mm -hmm. I will say this, FAM is one of the best organizations, hands down. Oh, no. Never that. ask anything from us, just provides, helps with our kids to make happiness. I mean, it's what it's all about is the kids. You know, it's crazy that you're saying that because I, 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 I think I touched on it a little bit earlier that, um, you know, FAM focuses a lot on making sure the kids are happy and having fun. Oh, my God. So all this whole amazing, thing is done. That's the amazing thing about and yeah. that's what I think that's what separates fair from the other organizations. Because all other organizations, I'm not trying to knock nobody. You know, everybody, you know, you're, if you're you know you're doing what you're doing, I, I I I applaud you and I appreciate what you're doing. Everybody does. But you shouldn't focus so much on the negative aspect of what's going on. You should also try to highlight the happy times, mm -hmm. the times that the kids want to have fun and they they're not feeling down and crappy. You should wanna you know just zoom in on that because you keep throwing all that negative stuff you know that's just gonna do nothing but you know you wanna, yeah you don't want to keep the negative vibes exactly. going nah 
You need your child needs positive energy all the time. And today we watched that hands down. Like, like yeah. there was a, there's a girl. I'm not gonna say the name. <laughs> Um, but she's not feeling the greatest, and she joined us today, and she was out there, and I watched that kid smile ear from ear, and it was the most amazing thing, Mm because throughout the time we've been here, I haven't seen her smile, and she's just, she's going through treatment, and and that's the reality of the fact. There's Mm -hmm. ups and there's downs, but I'll tell you, watching, just going out with Milk and you guys, and just going to venture off into the city, and Watching this kid's face light up is the most That's the amazing, reward. rewarding mm-hmm. thing I have ever seen. That's the biggest reward. Because and I just met her. Bad stuff. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, you know what you, you you have an idea already of what's you know what their oh battle God, is. Yeah, what yeah. their battle is. So when you see when you get a chance to see that their see their face light up because of how much fun they're having, how yeah. much joy they're having. That makes you feel great. Mm-hmm. It really does. And today, I mean, because of fam, we met more families that mm-hmm. we're, we're going to make a family out of. You know, we're going to stay in touch. Mm-hmm. Our Alabama friends, and, you know, it's just, it, it's heartwarming because I'm not really a social person as much, <laughs> but I got the privilege of meeting more people that I enjoy their company. They're amazing people with amazing stories, mm-hmm. and, and you guys fan. see that. And because of fam, it brought us all together, mm-hmm. and we got to experience all the joys today and the other day, all together. And you know what? Not to, uh, uh, another thing about fam. Um, I love how fam actually um, care about the dads. Yeah, yeah. I love how fam cares about the dads because you know what? Not for nothing, you know. I know fathers, you know, they, they get stereotyped, you know, because, you know, of not being there. Because when you, it, listen, it's hard when you, when you, if you have to work and also be at the hospital for your kid, that's so difficult. Mm-hmm. That is so difficult. I stopped working because of how difficult being back and forth is. I, I don't even know how we were able to afford it, honestly. But when you are a father and you have to provide, but at the same time be there for your child, you know, I feel like the doctors and the nurses, they don't fully understand that. I feel like they don't. No, not all the time. I mean, there's some of them do. There's some that care. No, don't get me wrong. There are definitely some that, that truly care, but then you also have the ones that are in it for the check. Yes. Hands down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it just for the check. And you could, like, it's almost like as if your child can kind of sense that too. Because... Your kid is going to be nice to who's nice with them, you know? Yep. They're going to react to whatever energy is being let off in the room. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So. <clears throat> See, I'm a working dad throughout the whole entire treatment. And I actually took a store because I'm a general manager for a store. And I actually took a store in Albany, which is an over an hour drive for me. Um, so this way during radiation for the eight weeks we were out there, I didn't have to miss work. I could nope. still provide. And when my daughter had her five-day stays, I would leave work, go hang out at the Ronald McDonald house for a little while with the wife. Mm-hmm. Wife would go up, hang out with my daughter while I chill with my son. And then nighttime we swapped, and I stayed the night every night in the hotel. Mm-hmm. Or not the hotel, I'm sorry, the hospital. Awesome, yep. I would shower there, shave, change go back to work the next morning and do it all over again. And I wouldn't change anything because I was there throughout every single mm-hmm. important transaction, mm-hmm. all radiation treatments. I was there every single chemo treatment, everything. I would never they need to it. understand. Like, think about all that sacrifice and think about all the things you had to maneuver and put around. No <laughs> sleep. Just to, <laughs> just to make it all work. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm... You could tell. I know you could. I know you can just relate to how many nights there were where you couldn't sleep at all. Yep. At all. And to have to do that, be up there for your child, going to work early in the next morning, and then do the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. I don't think. See, people <laughs> unless you really unless you go through it yourself, you're not gonna understand. Yeah, you don't. You're not gonna understand. Yeah, people don't understand is like one minute. You're perfectly happy, but then your mind does play tricks, and they, it, in situations like these, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. My mind has gone dark, dark roads. I'm grateful for my wife. She's helped me pull me out of those, but mm-hmm. it's the reality of the fact. It's the unknown, and and that's the scariest thing. 
you know? Mm. And I'm not taking anything away from the waves because the, the waves are the, our rock, our, our backbone, everything. They're the ones who keep us in check and in line. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, like you said, don't get the dad story mm -hmm. at all. <clears throat> the, the first thing I would always suggest is don't do the research. Um, uh, it will, the Internet's a negative thing. And I thought I was going to lose my daughter after three months. I literally spent two days in the hospital writing questions for my doctor because of things I read online. Don't do the research. Listen to your doctor. Listen to the family members. Reach out. Don't hesitate because I, I was that guy that, uh, okay, let's just get this done. Put her head down. Screw everything. Screw everybody. Let's just get it done. And <clears throat> your mindset's got to change. Mm -hmm. it, it's got to because we were told when we, this all first started, welcome to a family you wish you were never a part of. But at the same time, I'm grateful for that family. You know, it's, it, your mind's gonna play tricks, don't want it. Be there for your kid. Just do what you gotta do to make sure your family is your family. And at the end of the day, that's what defines you as a family. Don't be afraid to ask the questions. Don't be afraid to approach somebody who knows what you're going through. Just, it's okay to talk it out until mm -hmm. it's, Definitely okay. You know, I just, I feel like, you know, as a father, though, like dealing with all of this, you know, there's probably other fathers that feel the same way as you mm -hmm. do. You know and I mean? and uh, it might be, but at the same time, too, like, I wouldn't mind it to, to celebrate with other fathers. You know, uh, to me, like, when I found out about Jazzy, mm -hmm. I blew up your phone. Mm -hmm. I, I celebrated that when... It's not just my win, it's everybody's, everybody's win. Yep. And I don't care if I just met you yesterday, you tell me your kid's NED, I'm the happiest person, I got you. Take Let's it. celebrate, when celebrate. I watched a video of Honor ringing <laughs> that bell. We got a, whore, we got a, little, a little bell in our house, a little, mm -hmm. little bell. I grabbed that sucker, ran through the house, through the door. I'm mm -hmm. outside in the parking lot now. <laughs> in the parking lot, people looking at me crazy because they don't know what's going on. But you bet your you bet your ass, I told them what's going on, mm -hmm. though. <laughs> and that's it. I, like you got to celebrate every single win, every milestone, every every, every milestone. You cross, you got to celebrate it. When but, you got done with Rochester, was the first thing we did. Mm -hmm. We celebrated it. Mm -hmm. Anna got done with her radiation, radiation when you yep. were coming up, mm -hmm. and we celebrated every step mm -hmm. is a successful su step. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what happens tomorrow. It happens right now. Mm -hmm. If you're right now, you're good, celebrate it. Enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Live it. Have fun with it. Mm -hmm. I'm Josh, or you can call me Jazzy's dad. I'm Rob, or you could call me Anna's dad. And, and together, together, we're, we're fighting, fighting all monsters. monsters.